Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The legendary Jermaine Dupree. Yeah, yeah. What's happening? What How up, JD? Doing? What's going on? Yeah. Where you want to start? You want to start the number one freak, Nick? Freak, Nick. I'm, I'm, money what, long. What, what, say congratulations what, on money long thank, first. Yeah, we can start with the number one. All right, yeah. congratulations. Monday morning, number one record. That's right. Amazing. Money long, number one record this week, produced by JD. Yeah. That's nothing to you no more, JD. It's nothing. Yeah, I'm saying that's no, nothing that's to amazing. you no more. No, no, okay, okay. I'm, I'm saying I, I, I don't want to start with that. I came to talk about freak Nick. Right. I just want to say congratulations. No, no, though. I'm saying I'm, I'm, you know, I'm ecstatic about it. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Now let's yeah. talk about freak Nick. This freak Nick documentary. Yeah. Now, when making this documentary, you had tons of, of ladies and men scared that they were going to see their pictures, <laughs> their asses on the screen, but it was it was well done. It wasn't done in a disrespectful way. It was yeah. it was a so explain to it this documentary how it came out. Um, how it came up? Yeah. How well, it came about. I mean, it came about. I think Luke was trying to do this initially, mm -hmm. and then they started having conversations about it. And Luke said, you know, he can't do it if I wasn't involved. And then when they came to talk to me about it. I said the same thing to them. I'm like, well, I wouldn't do this if Luke wasn't involved. And they're like, well, we got Luke, so do we got you? And I'm like, yeah. So it went from there, and then it just kind of just started moving pretty fast. And then I just wanted to make sure that um, the story was told from all perspectives because the people that was concerned about the asses showing and all of that, they don't understand how young I was when Freak Nick was actually popping mm -hmm. so my perspective of freak nick wasn't the, that perspective i ain't see all that because i wasn't able to get into the clubs and all of this type of stuff so my perspective was i was part of the street traffic mm -hmm. i was out in the streets i was dancing outside the cars i was on peace street i was that was that was a part of freak nick that i saw other people saw luke got a different story mm -hmm. and other people so it was just really important for me to see make sure that we made you see everybody's different perspective. How much did y'all have to water the dog down because of this lame ass cancel culture era that we? None, because I mean, you. I feel like I feel like ultimately, what people don't understand is this: it's black culture. Are you embarrassed by our culture? Like, mm -hmm. are you embarrassed that you went to an HBCU and this is how y'all act? Word. If that if that's how you feel, then you should just t change your color of your skin because mm -hmm. this is that's life in Atlanta. We got Word. four. You know what I mean? Where everywhere else got one, y'all got Hampton and. One, we have four of them. So if you put all of that energy in one place, it's it's just what black culture is. Absolutely. I mean, how did um how did Twenty One Savage get to be a part of it? I mean, I know that um this was y'all era, you and Uncle Luke, but how did um hook up with Well, Twenty One? He been doing his birthday party, and the theme of his birthday party is Freak Nick mm. for the past couple of years. So, um, at first I was like no, but then, you know he. He he live in Atlanta. He from well, I mean, you know, he's he not from Atlanta, but he from base, basically from Atlanta. So if you're from Atlanta, you've been you felt the repercussions of something mm -hmm. from Freak Nick at mm -hmm. some point. Yeah. You know? It's crazy because um, you know, going to Hampton, of course, Freak Nick created so many different uh gatherings, right? Philly Greek, uh Fourth of July in Virginia, Jones Beach, New York City. It all started from Freak Nick, but I just thought it was a party that a party that was created just for people to wild out. That's what mm. I thought it was when you, when mm. you were in college. That's what you think it was. But the fact that it was created for students that didn't have any money was something. You want to break that down? Because I thought it was created for a whole different reason. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people, I didn't go to college, so I can't, you know what I mean? I didn't mm. know that either. So mm. the, the, the person that's watching this, that's probably me, that mm. didn't go to college, uh, <laughs> that don't know nothing about that lifestyle, you know, you don't understand that these kids that come from D.C. or New York or wherever they come and they go all the way to Atlanta, you think that they they got money to just fly back home on spring break and just Well, know, back then we didn't fly. Back. We would drive. Exactly. And we didn't have that's money. What I'm saying. So it's like, even, that's another thing that, that this documentary shows of how uh, unmanual we are as people. Unmanual, yeah. Unmanual <laughs> as we are as people because you guys used to drive. Mm -hmm. Now... When you think you're gonna see four girls from New York get in a car and drive to Atlanta just to have fun? No way. Never. Spirit Airlines. Never. Ninety dollars. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it it just shows you that type of stuff. And then like you know, so so you should see that Freak Nick is like, oh, these were some kids that couldn't go home. They 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 didn't know what their spring break was gonna be like. They watching all these white kids go to go to um, Daytona Beach. Daytona Beach and all this, and they got money. But these kids is stuck in Atlanta. They ain't got no money. So they threw a picnic. That turned into Freak Nick. Mm. That's a that's an American Black history story. Mm -hmm. Well, people weren't afraid to be broke back then. 
Yeah, well, I mean, you you, you have no you have choice. choice. To be, you, be, <laughs> you have no choice to be afraid. But no, nowadays people can front, right? So everybody can pretend to yeah, be something can. that they're not. You can pretend to have more than you got. Like yeah. nobody wants to. I mean, but they, they still be fronting it. too. They just, you know, they they. I mean, well, you yeah, you know, I be seeing these girls go to Tulum. And I'm I'm sure they sharing rooms. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. But, but you know, back then it didn't matter. Like back then, that's what I'm saying. It, it didn't matter. Back then. Like yeah. you would go to you know Philly Greek or Fourth of July in Virginia, and it'd be seven of us in the room, and See? nobody thought about that's anything. It wasn't we broke and be like, oh, you got the floor, you got the ah, you take your quick shout. But that's what it was because yeah. we was all hanging out as brothers. It didn't matter. That's why I thought it was for me. That's why as we got into it, that's why I was like, this has to come out because people, you know. We don't we don't see this in black culture. We just keep trying to make it seem like everybody got money and everybody do this and that. No, it was a time when none of that mattered, right? And I th- I like when Jalen Rose was talking about how he got to freak Nick. Mm-hmm. He took his cousin car or something, and mm-hmm. it was just like, you know, as long as I get a car, I'm out. We mm-hmm. get into freak Nick, and it was the same thing with me when I was seventeen or well. 16 when I had just got my first car. My first car was a Valari, mm-hmm. a two door Valori, basically. <clears throat> Probably listening, don't even know what that is. Mm-hmm. But it was an ugly ass car that looked like a pacer mixed with something else, mm-hmm. right? And I didn't care what the car looked like. I just was able to drive around Atlanta while this was happening. Mm-hmm. And that's all that's ultimately what your the goal was. Can you get into the the freak nick can you get in the traffic if you sitting at home and you can't get in that's when you mad but if you have a car that's what all that's all it was about mm. it's crazy how how they how they <coughs> easily cancel black events right but mm. well, you look at Daytona Beach you look at uh, Miami Spring Break you look at where the white kids go for their spring break and they wild out they get drunk they fight and all types of stuff but those events never get canceled it seems like they try to tame it but they just totally cancel Freak Nick, which yeah. is which is crazy. I mean, they had to because it 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 was it was bad. I mean, it got to a point. Not, and I'm not talking about the the misconduct with the guys and the girls. I'm talking about just the traffic and how the city was dealing with it. Because ultimately, these guys that was at their school, they started something they never talked to the the people in the city. So the city had no idea what was actually happening when it got out of control. They just start trying to control it the best way they could, but they weren't even talking to the DC Metro Club, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like at that point, it's like it's like uh, Frankenstein. You done created a monster, mm-hmm. and y- y- y'all can't control this. You got the only thing you can do is shut it down at least for a second and try to see if y'all can figure out how to make it work. Did it ever come back? No, I, I know we tried a couple years ago. Nah, I I don't think. I mean, I I think it could come back if you know if people really really sit down and figure out how to make it into essence fest because that's basically what it should have become mm-hmm. it should have become the essence fest of atlanta right but the traffic part of it was the, the that was the shit well most you know, of the people who go to essence fest now probably used to go to freak they do 100 all them black people was at freak yeah you, you know? just got to define a name because when people hear the name freak nick they think it's gonna be a uh yeah but i'm saying we can get past that we got slutty vegan now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For real, and the got I, think I just yeah. think it's too much cameras now. But yeah, well, really I, that's loose. another thing. I think that that's that's the other thing. That's the only thing I would say. If you go to Freak Nick now, you gotta put your phone away because you'll miss the girls dancing on the cars. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that you was driving down the street and you were looking for everything is how you saw Freak Nick. Mm-hmm. If somebody down there doing this, you gonna miss everything. Mm-hmm. So. That's another thing. You got to, you know, and maybe the hype of it and people saying it might make people want to see it. But I just think people are so, like, attached to their phones yeah. and they think everything is more important than their phone as opposed to seeing what's happening outside. Mm-hmm. And how come nobody ever focuses on some of the women that went down there because they wanted to have a good time? Like, they wanted to go out there and be loose and wild and liberated because well, it's freaking out. Okay. Yeah, we talk about that. Okay. We let, we let okay. the girls talk about that to show that they was mm-hmm. grabbing the dudes, you know, yeah, yeah. dick and all that type <laughs> of stuff. It went both ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was going both yes. ways. Do <laughs> you think Uncle Luke's music uh, helped or hurt Freak Nick? 100%. It, oh, it helped. You said, okay. did it help? It, it helped. Um, between Uncle Luke and So So Death Bass All Stars, that's the soundtrack of Freak Nick. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It was like, um, I think, I, I, I also think now, mm-hmm. With Miami shutting down spring break and all that, it's the music. 
Because the people don't, you you don't have, nothing's making you dance, mm -hmm. right? Nothing's making you jump on top of the cars. You see people doing it, but they doing it to music that don't really have that vibration, mm -hmm. right? At Freaknik, the girls was dancing so hard and the guys was dancing so hard. You ain't had time to be worrying about nobody side. Like it was a, the, the energy level was just too high, mm -hmm. right? And I just think the Luke music, um, like I said, the social death bass all stuff. The music was making you dance in a different space, and it made you think about, like you was like this, and it wasn't. You don't have time to be like, hey, nigga, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. no, we, ain't, we, you know what I mean? We ain't come down here for that. Mm -hmm. We came down here to see these girls. Let's mm -hmm. go see these girls. It's almost like the mentality of a man when he goes to the strip club, mm -hmm. right? I go to the strip club every week. You go to the strip club, guys don't come in the strip club looking for niggas. Right. They come in the strip club to see the girls. Mm -hmm. Right? That was the mentality of Freak Nick. And for some reason, that's that's kind of lost in the space that we live in now. Niggas want to go see what other niggas wearing. Mm -hmm. You think, well, speaking of that, um, if Freak Nick... <laughs> 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 Speaking of that, if Freak Nick did come back today, would you wear the Boss Baby outfit you wore at the Super Bowl? Boss Baby outfit. Yes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was, what was the what was the inspiration behind that outfit, JD? Um, first of all, I had on a tuxedo mm -hmm. with shorts, mm -hmm. very similar to what I have on today. Yeah, I have on a tie, a regular suit shirt, and I got on shorts. It's very mm -hmm. boys to men. Yeah, yeah. Really I mean everything. Um, and. <laughs> It's Vegas, right? You know what I'm saying? It's it's a Super Bowl. It's the biggest event in the world. I could have went up there with a starter jacket and starter hat. Mm -hmm. How regular nigga is that though? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. I think sometimes people don't realize. Like, I'm in the entertainment business, mm -hmm. and I'm getting ready to do the biggest show of Usher's life, not and my life. I guess you want to say mm -hmm. we going on the biggest stage in the world, and I should be wearing a baseball cap. And some looking like a regular ass nigga in the street. Yeah. Nah, mm -hmm. nah. I don't. I. I mean, that's that was the thought behind it, right? So I, it was more or less like, you know, a while ago, like, Envy, you remember we started this thing called the Ocean Seven, right? And it was me, Usher, Jonte, B. Cox. All we used to go to Vegas and we got dressed mm -hmm. and we'd be dressed up. So I wanted to actually have a piece of that in what we was doing. That you know, we in Vegas, like you don't go to. Usher show, I seen you at Usher show. You was dressed. You and you, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Niggas go to his show dressed up. Mm -hmm. You don't go to Vegas with your Fubu on. Right. You know what I mean? You just, <laughs> you just don't do that. Like, so you did it to get people talking, basically. Uh, no, nah, I didn't do it okay. to get people talking. I didn't even think nobody was gonna pay no attention to it. I yeah. had on a tuxedo with a tie mm -hmm. and a regular shirt. The socks threw people off. Well, that's mm -hmm. there. They were talking about they were they didn't care about the tux. They yeah. were talking about the socks. They were talking about the socks, right? And the socks. Once again, the socks, I, I understand why everybody keeps saying something about the socks, because they do look like, I guess, what they say, the Bobby socks. The Easter but, socks, yeah. yeah but yeah. They, not, they don't have nothing to do with that. They don't right. look nothing like that once you get up on the socks. And they also, you know, um, like I said, it's just, I don't know. I, it's, it's my man's line, mm -hmm. right? First of all, that's another thing. Pharrell's my man. He ain't y'all niggas man, right? I don't know this nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in support mm -hmm. of my homeboy line, mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about it. I, you know, it just happened. But I mean, shit, listen. I put my first group out in 1992. I'm trending in 2024. Yeah. Y'all can say whatever the fuck you want to say. Still got number one records. What did Usher's Super Bowl halftime performance mean to you? Um, Everything. As the it architect... Really the architect of us here, if we being honest. Yep. Yeah, everything. It means everything. Because when we made My Way, the, discuss, the discussion that he and I had making that record was that he wanted to get to that space. He wanted to, and when he once he got to that space, he wanted people to realize he did it his way. That's how mm -hmm. that whole album came about. So for me to be in that seat and watch it go from My Way to this, um, I probably was the most proud. And then at the same time, I mean, you know, he did six of my songs on my, on Super Bowl. Crazy. It's like you know, it's not a bunch of motherfuckers that can say Crazy. they had six of their songs performed on Super Bowl. I argued with somebody up here the other day when when they heard Confessions, right? A younger person, and they were like, "Yeah, he wrote Confessions." I was like, "I, you know, Confessions was about Jermaine Dupri. That Jermaine Dupri wrote that. That's factual." Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I mean, I wrote "You Make Me Wanna." I wrote "My Way." I wrote "Nice and Slow." Mm -hmm. I wrote "Confessions." I wrote "You Got It Bad." I wrote "My Boo." I wrote all these songs. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you know, people be like breaking it down when they when they talk about it and they say confessions, but nice and slow. All these songs I wrote, you know what I mean? Like, so it's just the story of confessions, I think, took over and it was like, I I was that guy. I was the person that was in that position. Um, but it happened right when he broke up with Chili. So people just assumed that he, wrote it. That he was writing it about Chili. Yeah. But that uh, was your yeah, story. Some, yeah, for some, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we even when writing it, I didn't think about, I wasn't even thinking about that. I, you know, you just go to the studio and you write songs. It's not even about, I mean, sometimes you have a motive behind it, but we was trying to just follow up. I, I know I was, I was trying to follow up You Got It Bad. It just came off 8701 and it was a big album. So mm -hmm. it was like, what y'all gonna do this time? Is Usher the biggest jewel in your crown? The biggest what? The biggest jewel in your crown? I don't know. I mean, Mariah Carey song, song of the decade. Yeah, that, that Emancipation mm -hmm. was a monster. I don't know. Um, I don't know. There's a couple in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he's definitely, um, well, let me say this. Rolling Stone said that Usher is the, uh, I mean, Confessions is the R&B, the number one R&B record of this 21st century, right? Mm -hmm. Or 20th century, whatever it is, 21st mm -hmm. century. So, I mean, if that's the, if that's a true statement, then I guess so. I mean, that's a big record. That's that's a big statement. Do you think Atlanta as a whole is getting documented properly? No. That's why, I, another reason why I want to make sure that this documentary gets the stage that it's on. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Hulu, Disney, uh, Mass Appeal for actually allowing us to finally tell our story at on, on this stage because this is the first story from the South that's ever been told. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I said that at South by Southwest and people was like, what? And I'm like, what, what what's a, what's an Atlanta story that you know? Uh, what's a Southern story that you know? You from the South, then what, what stories do we have that people know yeah. about the South? Besides, and ATL is not a story of, of of the South, of the South rise in the culture of hip hop. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that we get a story about our culture and how outcast popped, how, why you know so, so deaf. Oh damn, why Luke said Bankhead and Scarred? What was the reason for that? Like you ain't never wondered like, he from Miami, he talking about Bankhead bounce. Like mm -hmm. why he was saying mm -hmm. that? Freak Nick, Freak Nick, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is the first time that, it, um, like I said, the South gets set that, that look. I mean, we was never, we was, I, ne I think Hollywood never felt like our stories was important. If Freak Nick never happened, would Atlanta music blow up as fast as it did? No, because what's that little thing with the, uh, you know, when when, the, when you put the little roach trap down and the roaches get in there and they go back to their they, they house? Yeah, but I'm saying it's a raid, but it's a it's a little trap that they show yeah, yeah, yeah. on TV. They, they bring the food it, back to the and they day. take the food back to the. That's what Freaknik was for the South. People from Virginia, people from New York, people from Baltimore, people from D.C., people from everywhere came to Atlanta. The DJs in Atlanta was playing bass music, so so their bass all stars, Luke Skywalker, blah 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 blah. Kids went back to their hoods. Saying, yo, we was in Atlanta, this is the new shit they playing in Atlanta. Well, this is the shit that was we was doing in Freak Nigga. They somebody saw the video. And that's why the music spread that way, right? That's why it spread in so many places because these people took it back home as if they had discovered some new thing mm -hmm. that wasn't happening in they house in, in their neighborhoods. And at that point, if you take it to, you know, if five hundred people go back to Virginia with that same mentality mm -hmm. and it spread, then Virginia star sounding like Atlanta, mm -hmm. right? Or uh, whatever. That's you know. So no, mm -hmm. it wouldn't. I think Freak Nick was definitely our mixtape. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Freak Nick was our mixtape that made people say, "Oh, there's some shit going on down there." It's some. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's definitely. Yeah, we we. I don't know what would have happened if we. You know, it would have been a slower pace. Mm -hmm. How bad was it when the labels? It seemed like you know, watching the doc, I seen uh, Craig Mack performing. I seen Biggie performing. How bad was it when the label started touching Freak Nick? Did it commercialize it and make it worse or not at all? No, it was all good. I think um, that was in Peabody Park. So you know the scene when I'm showing you and I'm talking, I'm, I'm standing in the park and yep, I'm showing yep, yep. you. That was, that was the park stuff. And that was, the concerts actually was, was helping because all these black people in the park smoking weed, drinking, doing whatever they want to do. Because if nobody was governing this, right? It was just, you know, y'all niggas want to go do, go ahead. This, that's how the city was open to it. So they was just out there, and we never was nobody was scared about violence. wasn't nobody thinking about somebody pulling out a gun or anything. But that could have happened. Mm -hmm. So to give music 
and put music out there and then put artists on the shows that weren't just from the South definitely helped. Because then people from the North or whatever West Coast, they came and they was like, oh, Snoop here. This person, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you start feeling even more comfortable amongst all of these people. Mm -hmm. And now y'all about to turn around and do the, the Magic City docuseries, right? Yeah, yeah. Magic City and American Fantasy. Yeah. What's, what's, what's that about? I mean, we Magic, know what it's about. But, yeah. you know. uh, but it's also the same thing. It's a story about Magic City that 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 I don't think people know. Like, um, the the story of Magic City is so much more deeper than just a strip club, right? And and how Magic um, figured out a way to make this one club um, a worldwide situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then people always keep saying, like, why is Drake involved? Because Drake is from a different country. Mm -hmm. And he wants to come to a little bitty strip club in Atlanta. That's crazy, mm -hmm. right? That that I don't even know how you supposed to think about that because mm -hmm. I'm not from a different country. But I'm saying to be in a different country, mm -hmm. we we in the United States. I don't yeah. want to go to ain't nothing. I ain't heard nothing about nothing in Canada that make me want to fly there mm -hmm. on a Monday mm -hmm. and be a part of it, right? This place is that f crazy that has made people in. Toronto want to come to Atlanta on Monday. I think you have to hear about this. So it's just like I said, it's just highlighting things that have happened in the South that we haven't we haven't had an opportunity. So what helped elevate the, the, the Atlanta music scene more, Freaknik or Magic City? Freaknik. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because you always hear about records breaking in Magic City. Yeah, I mean, well, I think, and that was after the fact. That, right. that, by the way, that's me saying that. That mm -hmm. was That was something that I talked about. And once again, like I said, you got to remember, I wasn't, in the clubs in 80, mm -hmm. 82, 83, mm -hmm. 84, I couldn't get in no clubs. So and I wasn't even making music in 84. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and so uh, even in 92, when Criss Cross came out, I still I was only 19. I still couldn't even get into Magic City. So that that period where I felt like the strip club became the mixtape was a later 90s activity. Before that, mm -hmm. Freak Nick was running the show. Damn, I saw you with, uh, I think it was with Gail King and Carrie Champion and all of them. You was talking about how if you if, if a woman couldn't understand you being in the script club, she wasn't the woman for you. Yeah, 100%. So that if that was a deal breaker off the top. 100%. Really? Yeah, because I'm saying like, I'm going to use you, Jess, as an example. <laughs> if me and Jess was talking and she came to Atlanta and I said, we going to Magic City tonight. And then she was like, well, you know, I don't really fuck with no strip clubs. I ain't, I don't know. I'm, at that point, you you have broke our synergy. You flew to Atlanta to stay at my house mm -hmm. while I go party with my homeboys. Now, when you when you got I got a go, really nice house, JD, I'm sure. Yeah, but I'm saying, <laughs> but when I go to the strip club, as a woman, her mind's gonna start doing this, mm -hmm. right? I asked mm -hmm. you to come with me mm -hmm. so that your mind wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But you want to stay at home mm -hmm. and wait till I get back. Good point. And then come back. Possibly smelling like the strip club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all these questions. And yeah, yeah. then we gonna have a beef. Mm -hmm. You fucked it up from the jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I fucked it up by allowing you to just stay at home. I mm -hmm. should have just made you come. So I'm just saying, ultimately, if this is part of your life, this is part of my life. So right. if you gonna fuck with me, you gotta know that that's happening. That's gonna happen, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's interesting because when I was dating Janet, I tried to not take her. I was going to ask you, you had Janet Jackson in Madison? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. I, but I, I, I fought it for the longest. I, I wasn't in the space mindset that I'm in right now because mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to it like the way I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was thinking like, oh, if I take her in there, one of them girls going to tap me on my shoulder that I done been with and she going to know. And then I, I was thinking yeah. about all the bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nah, you, if this what you do, what you did in your past is your past. Mm -hmm. I'm with you now. What's, let me see what's happening. Why you want to go there every Monday? That's what her question was. Mm -hmm. Fuck it, let's go. Mm -hmm. Did she understand after she went why you wanted to be there every Monday? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> now, when does JD get to tell his story, right? Because there's so many, so many. I, I would say, people in the industry that are successful from the JD tree, right? We, we can go back from, of course, Little John and Scooter Braun and... We can go to, you know, of course, Usher and the stuff you did with Mariah. You can go to myself and, and Neil, who manages uh, Rice and Tiller. A lot of people don't know that story. So when does JD create that story and go through it so people can understand what you've did, what you produced, the artists you've broken, the executives and, and talent that you created? I mean, I think the Freak Nick doc 
helps that get helps me get into that space because you know for the longest the south has been ignored mm. it's just what it is right. and i'm and i'm part of i'm part of that cloth that's been ignored mm -hmm. you gotta think at 19 i put out my first group that everybody knows and i wrote and produced every line and every beat in the the, the music at 19 if a person and they they first single was a number one, a top 100 single, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about Criss Cross. Criss Cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. If that was sports, like football or basketball, mm -hmm. they'd call me a freak of nature, mm -hmm. right? But the fact that it was the South, they treated us like we weren't even hip hop. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's some, that's some gimmick shit. Like, that ain't real hip hop. So then it made people ignore the fact that I'm the person who ushered in young people rapping. If it wasn't for them, you as a young person, you wouldn't even know that it was possible that you could have a record deal. Mm -hmm. Who else has come out since Bow Wow that, you know, Bow Wow was the only other person that did it, and I put him out. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying it, it's the, the stories have been ignored. So mm -hmm. somebody, you know, at least we get one story and we got two stories. Um, hopefully that, you know, from that, it'll 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 get into that space so you can actually see it, and then people won't have this misconception about what they have about me. Michael Michael Bivins said you got the whole backwards thing from from him, the whole backwards clothes. He said that up here actually. <laughs> he, said, he, like, okay. he said what? <laughs> he said that up here. He said, "Oh, I didn't get it from him." Mm -hmm. um, but BBD was in a space where they was doing things right, mm -hmm. um, and they were they I think they had their pants inside out. That's what. Um, Cause I Chris say that Cross. in the song, cause yeah. inside out is we, 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 we. Yeah. ABC was wearing they clothes inside out. So the the day that I told Chris to put his jump on backwards, that's what I was thinking about. I'm like, they got their clothes on inside out. Maybe you should turn yours around. I never saw BBD do it, and mm -hmm. I saw and I and I spoke to Mike, cause he got on his on his cover of his, uh, I think Do Me Baby, he got a DB a BBD jacket on that I thought was a leather pullover. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, I had my jacket on backwards. So we had a conversation about it, but mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't actually know. We never had, I never knew that that's what was happening. And you know, when people talk about you too, JD, they gotta talk about the fact that Mace thanks you for being the first person to pay him his worth. You introduced Biggie, you know, to Atlanta in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And, and so, who, so, so who knows how that inspired him. And Jay-Z with, with Money Ain't A Thing yeah. was, was an introduction to the South in a lot of ways. So you gotta get credit for that too. Yeah, I mean, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, like I said, it's been ignored. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all. That's all you could do. Like I said, if you was, if if I was in New York, I'd be the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one hundred percent. It's yeah. no, it's no way. I mean, even like today, you don't know a person. Y'all don't have a person that can come up here this year that had his first number one record in 1992 and got a record that's number one today. You'll never, you won't see nobody else come up here to this station this year. Damn. Wow. Yeah, that's no. That's actually true. <laughs> you won't. No, not not this year. I mean, I don't even, and we probably won't have it next year either. But I'm saying no. My <laughs> first number one record was in 1992. Mm -hmm. I have the number one R&B record in the country today. Man, Do you think it's the media? Because even when you look at Atlanta, <laughs> she said I was born in 92. Born in 92. She was born in 92. Yeah. <laughs> Atlanta's run has been longer than everybody too. My run has been longer than everybody. Yeah. Mm. That's that's what I'm saying. Well, that's I think that's another thing. Like when people say Atlanta's run, yeah, Atlanta's run, but my run. I don't, and I don't, I'm not I don't I mean I'm a cocky person, but I don't mm -hmm. be one to just like, hey, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I I, I represent the city, so mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I let the whole city get the, the the splash for it. But my run has been longer than anybody's. Well, if you don't tell your story, JD, nobody else is. No, I'm going to tell it. Yeah, yeah. Believe me, that's why it's important that you watch Freak Nick on Thursday. <laughs> Y'all run them streams up at Hulu. That's right. So that Hulu calls me and says, JD, we need your story. That's right. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, you, you relaunch Social Death too, right? Huh? You relaunch Social Death? Yeah. As far as label? Yeah. What artists do you have? Are you looking for artists? I know you got to go. But are you looking for artists? And are you putting a sign back up in Atlanta that says... Uh, yeah, I'm putting a sign back up. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this. But anyway, I, I, I can say it. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> On, you know, BMF comes to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Are they in Atlanta right now? Mm -hmm. And um, you'll see in the BMF series that the sign goes back up. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when that happened, I was like, okay, it, it, you know, as many niggas watch this, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put this sign back up because mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So now nah, we are gonna put it back up. Uh, on the artist tip, I'm I, yeah, I'm looking for new artists. It's, it's just my 
you know, it's that's what I wanted. I wanted a space for me to continue to keep putting out new artists. Mm. Um, I love putting out new artists. I'm not scared to put out new artists, and I don't think nobody else could do it better than me. Right. Yeah. When, when, you, when you paid Mace what he was worth, did you do that just to upstate Diddy? No. Okay. I don't, you know, when I pay people, I don't know, I don't know that I'm paying them more than, you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know that that's, you know, I don't have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I just go after what I want. Like if you, so if I wanted, you know, when I signed Harlem World, I wanted to make the deal because Mace kept telling everybody in every interview that he did that he came to Atlanta to meet with me. Mm-hmm. Right. So I actually felt like I fucked up. Right, so I felt like, damn, I fucked up and I missed this nigga Mason. He out here killing it. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? Let's make this deal. And he told me what he wanted to do, and I I didn't think about it twice. I just was like, let's do the deal. Mm-hmm. I ain't know I was giving him more money than he was. You All know, right. I never knew that. Mm. Well, there you have it, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. It's Jermaine Dupree, yeah, yeah, yeah. Freak Nick, this Thursday. We appreciate you, brother. Yeah, Congratulations, you... Money Long. Let me say this: cause she <laughs> might right. be watching. Congratulations, Money Long, number one record. Um, it's a R and B song, no rap, number one urban record in the country. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's right. Jermaine Dupree. Yeah. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.